let's have a look at the, um, the third uh, reason uh, for money demand okay which then would then explain the negative relationship between interest rate and the demand for money so the financial wealth uh, of a uh, uh, household can so this would be the portfolio of the financial wealth so it can either be in terms of money or bonds okay um, and for this M can be further divided into into two M1 and M2 based on the reasons why household would like to hold money so M1 would be the transaction and the precautionary uh, demand for money okay so this one as we know it has no relationship with interest rate it's positively it has a positive relationship with income so it doesn't really fit our purpose to explain the negative relationship between money demand and interest rates this one however as we have discussed earlier so there are some portions of money that which household would hold okay for speculative uh, purposes for speculative reason so this one so m2 and bonds so these two would be a kind of like a, um, a substitute a perfect substitute so household okay will look at m2 and bonds as a perfect substitute so they will either hold um, for speculative purpose so speculative purpose they will either hold everything in in terms of money or in terms of bonds okay so it's, it's either one of these two okay so we're going to look at the individual investor okay so an individual investor for speculative reason for the third reason will either hold either money or bonds okay so remember this is for speculative purpose so you know what will then decide you know whether the individual investor should should he hold bonds or money for speculative reason so this one it will depends on interest rate okay so Keynes okay argued that okay so firstly we need to know that there will be a normal interest rate and which is RN and RC is the critical interest rate according to Keynes each individual investor would have their own perception you know their own perception their own calculation like what should be the normal interest rate and what would be the the, the 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 kind of so this one would be you know different you know each individual would have a different expectation you know different calculation according to themselves you know according to each individual investor what is the normal level for for interest rate okay so try to uh, pay attention to what i'm about to explain um so this will then you know uh, really explain how an individual investor will then decide okay either to you know should he hold you know uh, for speculative reasons should he hold money or bonds okay m2 or b okay so each individual will have their own um, expectation their own perception on what is the normal interest rate so then they will compare the normal interest rate with the prevailing in market interest rate okay the prevailing interest rate in the market okay so if they if they think okay so each individual will have a different level so not everyone will, will basically have the same you know i might think that the normal interest rate will be five percent you might a person a might say six percent person b might say say seven you know eight percent everyone is free to have their own because you know we, we use different method different uh, perception so let's say you know uh whatever it is we will then decide based on you know are uh, the prevailing interest rate market we're going to compare these two things the market interest rate R and the normal interest rate N. Okay, the normal interest rate is based on our understanding, based on our own calculation. So if we think that the current interest rate in the market is higher than the normal interest rate, so we would expect that the interest rate, the market interest rate will then go down. So here, okay, if we think that the prevailing interest rate in the market is higher than the normal interest rate, so we expect that the interest rate will then go down because it's too high okay it's not supposed to be it's too high so we expect interest rate to go down so as we know from our previous discussion lower interest rate means you know there is a possibility for capital gain okay for capital gain in this case we would like to hold bonds as much as we will i mean like so there'll be zero zero demand for money so for speculative reason in that case it would be better to hold bonds rather than money if however you know we we think that the interest rate the prevailing interest rate in the market is lower than the normal interest rate so since the market interest rate okay is too low so we expect that you know the market forces will then push it up okay so we expect interest rate will then to go up and now there is a possibility of capital loss 
Okay, so whenever there is a possibility of capital loss, so now we have to do a simple cost and benefit analysis. We know that holding bonds will give us interest rate payment in return, so we will be willing to hold bonds as long as the capital loss is smaller than the gain that we receive from the interest rate payment. Okay, so this one will then boil down to the critical interest rate. The critical interest rate is where capital loss equals to the benefit that we would get from the payment from the interest rate. Okay, so basically we would get zero return. Okay, so capital loss because you know between RN and RC in this case we know that you know although we have capital loss but the payment that we receive in return, okay, the interest rate, the return from interest rate is still higher than the capital loss. See, in that case we will still be willing to hold bonds. Okay, so unless the interest rate is too low, lower than the critical interest rate, so below this, so capital loss is much bigger, okay, than the interest rate return. So in that case, it's no longer profitable to hold bonds. So we would rather hold money, okay. Remember, this money we hold them for speculative reason, okay. We might want to hold them, you know, just to wait for the right chance to buy bonds in the future. Okay, but since you know it is not profitable to buy bonds, so we, 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 we liquidate them, we want to hold money. We just want to wait for the right chance, you know, to, to buy bonds back, okay, in the future. Okay, so this graph will then explain the, the, the investors, you know, individual uh, investors' decision, okay, um, on, on the speculative demand for money. Okay, so any all these lines, so you can see that, you know, the, the, the function is, is discontinuous at RC. Okay, whenever the interest rate is above RC, the critical interest rate, that person would be, you know, it would be, would be, would prefer to hold bonds. Okay, would hold bonds because above RN, you expect interest rate, interest rate is too high, you expect interest rate to go down, so you expect capital gains, so you'll be willing, you will be more profitable to hold bonds. Anything lower than RN, the normal interest rate, you, you, you expect a capital loss, but the capital loss is still much smaller than the return uh, in terms of interest, so you will still be willing to hold bonds, okay, so no money being held for speculative reason. But anything, any interest rate lower than the critical uh, interest rate, now in this case, it's no longer profitable to hold bonds. You would rather hold money, okay, for speculative reason, wait for the right chance to buy bonds then. So here we have two extremes, okay. So we have a discontinuous function here, okay, we have two extremes. So the individual investor, you know, will either hold everything in terms of bonds or everything, you know, in terms of money for speculative reason. Okay, so at this point, uh, the holding of bonds equals to WHI minus M1I, so zero money. And in, in, at this point, um, the, 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 the hold for bonds would be zero. Okay, so the person will hold, you know, for speculative reason, he will hold his financial assets in terms of money. Okay.